Hi, we're here today with Bruce Campbell, a rather unconventional artist, and he's allowed us to come to his studio and take a look at his work. So thank you, Bruce, for letting us come in and invade your space and talk to you. And so welcome. <laughs> it's a great pleasure. <laughs> um, can you tell us a little bit about how you got started as an artist and how you came to work with all this great stuff here? I am self-taught. I've been an artist all my life uh -huh. um, and then spent years in commercial art doing graphic design, illustration, advertising, murals, illustrated a children's book, had some clothing companies, various things. And so at one point, I rented an old farmhouse. And it had been a historic, it was a 75-acre farm. There had been a blacksmith shop there, sort of a whole migrant farm worker community, bunch of outbuildings. And the landlord didn't want to pay the taxes and do the upkeep on all the outbuildings. So he had the fire department burn them down for practice. And then they bulldozed most of the metal into a big hole in the ground. And uh, anyway, I was living on the old farm. I had royalties coming in on clothing and greeting cards and things like that. So I had some spare time, and I wanted to make fine art. Um, and I just, I don't know where ideas like this come from, but I just thought, why buy canvas? I guess I'm just a recycler. I reuse everything. And there were all these beautiful forms. This is a, a familiar face. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about what this piece is and, and how you came to do this one? Uh, this is a water heater. It's an old boiler uh, from a farm, and it's been cut in half uh, lengthwise to be a feed trough, which oh. I find these all the time. Very huh. common thing that farmers tend to de reuse water heaters for culverts, irrigation pipe, welded end to end, or they would cut them in half and oh, make cool. feed troughs. Huh? Uh, and then I did a series of monas. And um, some of these big pieces, did you have something in mind when you uh, well, started you know, these? I mean, certainly these would be great in, in commercial buildings, um, libraries, mm -hmm. hospitals. Uh, I mean, they need a big space. And yeah. they're, um, particularly this piece, I think, is so soothing. It's such a tranquil yeah. and uh, spiritual and peaceful image uh, that it would be wonderful out there in the world where everybody's frazzled and where life is fast. Uh, I have to admit, I don't know what a lot of these pieces are, but this one I recognize. This is a car hood, right? Correct. <laughs> okay. yep. I'm actually doing a series of car hoods at the okay. moment. Uh -huh. This is a, oh, it's a Dodge. Um, but one thing I'm really enjoying about working with car hoods is the color that comes out. Um, they're all obviously extremely colorful. And yeah. Um, and so, I, you know, it, it pulls me away from the dark rust, which I love. These are the Egyptian fingers you were talking about, right? Mm -hmm. The waviness. They're getting there, right? Yeah. These will be even more refined. Uh, this is an unfinished piece. Um, so, yes, but there's the Egyptian elegant thing. Beautiful old Art Deco refrigerator door. Actually, this one came from the mountains. It was given to me by a woman who has a cabin in the mountains and some beautiful old metal. Um, had just been outside forever, has this, almost looks like granite, has mm, this gorgeous yeah. patterning in the metal. I always leave the hardware, uh, and I'll, you know, I, I, I find that anytime I <laughs> alter anything, I always just feel like, what did I do that for? Yeah. I mean, it's what it is. Definitely adds to it. the beauty of what it is. And the little insignia up here. Marquette, yeah, so now that becomes is, the name of the piece, huh? I'm sorry, this, this looks like it would be perfect on a wall, like a, you just, Hang it up, up on the wall. It's like what, you know? It's... I could see this in my dining room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this is an old Lincoln hood. And uh, at the moment, I'm painting with metallic gold. Um, so I, I kind of created this golden harp. And I'm, I'm sort of allowing the gold to escape the harp and spread out into this area. Um, trying to keep this one bright. Uh, it's easy as you paint to become, to kind of get dark because you keep adding layer upon layer. And, um, so I'm keeping this metallic gold kind of working its way through the image and kind of trying to embody music in this imagery, in the spiraling movement of music spreading through this piece.
So Bruce, we've seen a lot of your wonderful art, and um, could you tell us where you get your raw material from? Uh, I'm, I don't limit myself to any one particular um, technique, but I would say that the primary source is old farms. Uh, and when I'm driving through the country, I always take a new route and keep my eyes open. Um, uh, and if I see a big pile behind a barn or on a farm, I'll go up and knock on the door and show them one of my cards. I'll say, hey, I, you know, turn junk into this. And um, it's actually an aspect of my work that I love maybe as much as anything is, is the archeological standpoint of digging through old barns and, um, and scrap piles and finding these incredible treasures and, and meeting these old farmers and hearing about a disappearing way of life. And uh, at first they're very, uh, they're very suspicious. They don't say much and they, you know, and then eventually they warm up to you and then you can't get away. They tell you all these stories about the history of each piece of metal and, and, and their world. And, um, and, we, and so it, it, in a way it's sad to see it, it's disappearing and I'm sort of surfing that wave of development. They're clearing off all the old farms and um, for de suburbia and, um, and all the metal is devalued of course and is all just being pitched or, or, or melted down. And so you drive up to these old farms and you, once they give their permission, you put the stuff in your car and you you bring it to your home. Where do you where do you store all this stuff? I live in the country. I'm out in the plains. I have a lot of acreage for scrap metal. I probably have an acre or so. Um, yep, I bring truckload after truckload home. It's all here, getting ripe. It's all out there, uh, weathering, rusting, aging, um, and I have years and years. In fact, more than a lifetime's worth of metal. Well, that concludes our visit with Bruce. And I, I just want to thank you so much for allowing us to come in here and take a look at your art and your junk. It's been fantastic. <laughs> oh, uh, thanks so much. Well, I've really enjoyed it too. And I'd encourage you and all our viewers to come on out and visit anytime. Oh, and great. Bring your junk. <laughs> okay. Well, good. You hear that, everybody? Bring your junk. <laughs> and check out the art while you're at it because it's incredible. Uh, thanks, thanks so much. Thanks, Bruce. Uh, you're so welcome. <laughs>